I'm gonna show you how to steal a live Microsoft 365 login. We'll get their username, their password, credentials, bypass two-factor authentication, and have complete access to the account. We are going to fool the user. We're gonna deceive them. It's that trick known as social engineering with a little bit of phishing, but we're gonna take it one step further because we're gonna use some cool techniques, tools, and tradecraft that make us be able to do this, not just for Microsoft 365, but for any website across the internet. Because we are going to use a very special tool called Evil Jinx. Now, if you haven't heard of Evil Jinx before, it is a reverse proxy phishing framework that is able to bypass multi-factor authentication. But that reverse proxy tidbit is like the coolest thing in the world. What that means is that Evil Jinx basically acts like a man in the middle. So that the victim, the end user entering their credentials to log into the service is really genuinely acting with the actual facebook.com or google.com, Microsoft Online. And we, as the hacker, get to listen in on this trap that we've set up, this fishlet that we've laid out, so we can keep track of the domains, the login parameters, every variable part of the authentication process, and we can steal their session. Let me show you how to set it up, but here I'm online at help.eviljinx.com. This is their documentation. You can cruise through all of the awesome stuff for getting started with the software, hey, building it, getting the code up and running, deploying it out on a remote server, and then spinning up some phishing domains so that we can social engineer the victim. Now, I wanna keep this easy, but I also wanna make it pretty realistic and real world. So I've set up genuinely just a cloud instance out there on the internet with DigitalOcean, and we can go use this as our phishing domain. If you haven't used DigitalOcean before, you can create an account, hey, run through the create section to create your own droplet. It is super duper easy to do. You choose whatever data section, operating system, version, hey, password and credentials, and you're done. Now it's one thing to have this cloud instance, but if we want to send a fish, we want to fool or social engineer the victim, we should set up some pretty decent pretense, right? So let's say this scenario, I am going to email the victim and tell them, hey, there's a new update to the OneDrive software, please use this link to go download your personalized copy for our organization. Now we can build out that email, but we need to have a pretty legitimate looking domain, right? Thankfully, I do own the domain 1.zip, which gives me basically infinite power for subdomains because I could go ahead and register, ooh, maybe a Microsoft OneDrive.3.4.1.zip. 3 4 one zip So it looks like a software package for Microsoft OneDrive or literally anything else that I want. Just for the convenience, I've added these subdomains login and logon and dub dub dub, which will be used by Evil Jinx in just a moment. Let's go set that up. I'm gonna log in into my Kali Linux virtual machine so we have this perspective as the attacker and let me SSH into the root user at my Microsoft OneDrive.3.4.1.zip dot three dot four dot one dot zip that is literally the domain for this phishing server I've created. Let me hit enter on this. Yes, we can log in and let's enter our root password for the domain that we have set up here. With that, we should be logged in. Here I am, last login, just root at my temp evil jinx box. Good, now we can get things cruising. We will want to update, if you haven't done that already, sudo apt update, nice and easy. That will cruise through and we should install some other tooling that we're able to use Evil Jinx with. We wanna make sure we have Git installed. We also wanna make sure that we have Golang or the Go programming language. So what I could do is sudo apt install Git and Golang Go, I think is the repository name inside of Ubuntu and Kali here. So let's cruise through this. I do already have these installed and now we can just grab the Evil Jinx repository. Here's the best part, Evil Jinx is open source and free. Like, hey, it's all put together by Kuba Gretzky. Uh, you can track him down online, always doing incredible stuff over on the interwebs. And this is Evil Jinx 3.0. We can grab this repository and start to play with it. But let me tell you, hey, Evil Jinx was put together way back in 2017, but it has just gotten bigger and better. Now, Kuba is putting together like, hey, a full-blown course on setting this up and getting to fish based off of any website across the internet that you want. There's the Evil Jinx Mastery course, and he's building a whole community between red teamers, penetration testers, threat emulation teams, folks that are doing phishing on a daily basis for the work that they do, and getting together like minds to be able to build out fishlets and more capabilities. But let's go ahead and copy and paste this URL so that we can clone it on our 
droplet. Back in Kali Linux on our droplet, let's go ahead and git clone pasting in that evil jinx repository. I'll hit enter on that, it'll pull it all down. Perfect, now let's move into that directory and this is super duper easy. All that we need to do to build this on Linux, well you can just as easily do this on Windows with a .batch script after you have Golang installed. All we really need to do is just make. We run the make command and hey it'll cruise through the make file, set it all up here for us. That's it. Now in the current directory, we do have a build folder and I could move into that build directory where we could just simply run evil jinx. Let me fire it up from the build directory. We can tab to autocomplete our evil jinx binary and this is it. This is evil jinx in the community edition version 3.2.0 from Kuba Gretzky. Now here's the thing. We need to provide the path to our fishlets and we haven't talked about fishlets just yet, but let's get into it right now. I've downloaded a local copy so that I can show you this with syntax highlighting and a good text editor, but this is an example YAML file that is a fishlet. And fishlets, they are small configuration files that are used to configure Evil Jinx for targeting a specific website, ultimately with the goal of performing this phishing attack. You can have as many of these fishlets as you want, and then ultimately you can tell Evil Jinx to enable or disable them, but ultimately the syntax is the most important piece. So we can dig into the documentation to try and understand how these fishlets are put together, what syntax do we need based off of different keys, and what they really do inside of Evil drinks. You can see the documentation has been maybe preparing some examples for like LinkedIn or Okta or AWS or Instagram. I don't know, whatever website you want, but let's go take a look at the fishlet format. Ultimately, we need to define, hey, what's the minimum version of Evil Jinx that should work with this fishlet? And then where do we go once a user had successfully logged in to the real genuine application? Like LinkedIn. You can define sort of parameters or like variables that can be used within other templates and other fishlets if you really wanted to, but you'll fill them in for proxy hosts or auth tokens or credentials, all these things you can see on the side here. But the proxy host describes all of the subdomains and domains that Evil Jinx will have to handle proxying the traffic for. It is, again, a reverse proxy, sort of man in the middle for the sessions and authentication. So it needs to track all of those and all the variables, all the parameters, HTTP methods and things that go back and forth for the authentication process. And of course, to be authenticated, there needs to be some kind of token, something like a hello, my name is badge, something you can give to the server or prove and validate your identity so that you are successfully logged into a website. Normally that is an HTTP cookie or some session information that could be stored within local storage in your web browser. So I'll be the first to say crafting fishlets is kind of an art to itself. A little bit of a science to it. Hey, trying to track down within like the developer tools in your web browser. Let me show you like as an example, if we were to try to log in to any web page, say, okay, let's open up our developer tools and let's try to see what communicates over in the network tab. Let's say I log in with a please subscribe at gmail.com. Enter the password here, it could be anything. Let's see what happens. If if I try to log in. Here you can see a post request to sessions and we could dig into maybe any of the cookies that are set here, maybe things that are important. Check out the payload. Here is an authenticity token that we would need to keep in mind. Maybe be able to extract that out and see it as part of the communication and the email and password, of course. But ultimately we need all the fields and information for a successful login. So you kind of need to build out fishlets in a test bed. Say we wanted to build out that Microsoft 365 fishlet though. Thankfully, Kuba has already put this all together here for us in that Evil Jinx mastery course and some great information that's now already out online. Take a look at all the awesome stuff that he covers. Like, hey, maybe some advanced phishing, some JavaScript injection, landing page redirectors, or mass targeting with your phishing lures. They even get into some of the secure hardening techniques that any website can use to try to prevent some of this reverse proxy man in the middle techniques. That's some of the defense, that's some of the mitigations, but ultimately, hey, we can beat this up for stuff like Okta or Microsoft 365 or any website. 
And hey, don't take it from me. Kuba shows you how to put this all together when creating and crafting your own fishlets and how to make that process easy. So you could just slap this in, put it together for any website you want. Doesn't have to be just Microsoft 365, but man, this is gonna be a super cool demo. Here it is. This is the Microsoft 365 fishlet, the YAML file and configuration that we can use to tell Evil Jinx to put together this reverse proxy process and fish and steal credentials and steal the whole session for a Microsoft 365 user. Let's get into it. Let's move into that fishlets directory where we knew we had the example.yml. Let me go ahead and put my m365.yaml file. Let's paste all this in. I'll save and exit. Now let's run Evil Jinx one more time, but we know that we need to pass in that tack P parameter for our fishlets directory. We'll add that in and fire up Evil Jinx and take a look. Here we can see we have our fishlets loaded and M365 as our new configuration is present. It's currently not enabled, but now we can configure that. So first things first, we do need to configure our domain. We'll use the command config domain, and then we'll specify that domain that we've set up to host our phishing link, that whole page, right? We'll use that Microsoft OneDrive.3.4.1.zip. This is literally the HTTP domain, the website where we're staging our fish. I'll hit enter on that. You can see that is set. And now we should tell our fishlet that that is the domain that we want to use. We can use fishlets hostname set for our M365 fishlet here, and we'll go ahead and use this exact same domain, Microsoft OneDrive 3.4.1.zip. Let's paste that in and run it. Perfect, but next we need to configure the IP address of Evil Jinx. It needs to know itself, its own location. Thankfully, this is from the box that DigitalOcean had spun up for us, so we just need to enter the IP address that DigitalOcean knows is out on the internet. We'll do a config IP version four, and let's just paste in the 143.198.55.53 IP address. Let's hit enter on that, and now we're rocking. Finally, we can enable our fishlet. Let's use fishlets enable M365, and that should now be set. It will try to set up all the certificates that might be necessary for it, and Evil Jinx handles that all for you. What we could do now is just take another look at our fishlets and take a look. There is our M365 fishlet enabled and ready for us to create a lure next, a fishing lure. And the lure is really the hook right? Like the fish hook to catch this fish. This is what will dangle in front of the user and tease them with that that way. Okay. Now they'll log in and give us their credentials willingly. Thanks to this social engineering, but let's build out that pretense so that we can genuinely send a phishing email to our Microsoft 365 user. So I'm going to switch context here because ultimately I want to log in on a windows host. I want to make this realistic, say, Hey, I'm the user working from my workstation. So let me put on the video victim hat and sort of act as the fool here. Say I were just going about my work using Outlook, hey, just that office application for me to be able to play and use and read my emails, right? Now this is the Microsoft 365 account that we had just previously set up in the most recent video where we staged our own Microsoft 365 tenant and we have an M365 admin account. Now let's stage our phishing email. Let's send this to the M365 admin at that 2ntby4.onmicrosoft.com, the randomly generated Microsoft 365 tenant that we created here. Let's say new Microsoft OneDrive update, security update. Ooh, look at that, nice and fancy. Let's just say, hey admins, start the download for our org. Cool, I fixed my typo there, and I think this is a mediocre, pretty decent fish, right? So let's get back to Evil Jinx, and let's create that lure. Currently, we don't have any lures created, but we can just simply lures create a new one. We know that M365 is enabled as a fishlet, so we can simply lures create M365. I'll hit enter on that, and we'll create a new lure with ID zero, so we can go check it out. Hey, do we have any new lures? Yes, we do. I'll zoom out a little bit. You can see the path here, just a random ending for our lore. And we could just do simple lures get URL based off of ID zero. Now this will tell me this is our phishing hook and URL. This is what should go in the email. 
So let's get back to our email draft. Let's paste this in instead. It looks a little bit wonky with, hey, something trailing after the zip archive, but that's fine. Maybe we can just add some ampersand randomness in here or uh, an Octothorpe, right? That'll be a comment. We could add like whatever base64 values we want. Make this some big overwhelming URL. Now we've crafted this URL. Our lure is ready and we can just go send this to the victim. Let me put these side by side. All right, we are ready to hit the go button. Phishing email on the left-hand side, email inbox of our victim on the right. Let's hit send. Email is sent. Let's go take a look. I don't know, can we force the send and receive in our inbox here? Oh, hey, it went to my junk email. <laughs> All right, good enough, that's fine. Hey admins, Microsoft let us know about a new OneDrive client. All right, let's see if we can fire it up with that link. Okay, I went split screen and moved my email to the inbox, so I can go ahead and click on this link here. Remember, Evil Jinx, our threat actor is on the left and our victim is on the right. Let's click to open up our login over at Microsoft OneDrive here, and let's log in as the victim, bear in mind. I'm wearing my victim hat right now. Let me enter my M365 at 2nt by 4onmicrosoftcom I'll hit next to enter my password. Here is my victim password. As I enter it in, we can go ahead and sign in. Nice, Evil Jinx got it right away. Here's that super secret password. And the victim now has their two-factor authentication prompt. Here it is, you can see it on my phone. We'll go ahead and toggle that on. We'll go ahead and enter that code, which should be 24 at the time of firing this up. We'll hit enter on that, approve the sign in. And look, over here on Evil Jinx, it has detected the authorization URL, intercepted the token, and stolen the session cookie. Now, well, we can just go all hacker side now. We don't even need the victim. They've done their job in providing their credentials in session. So let's get back to Evil Jinx. Let's take a look at the sessions that we've captured. And here it is. Here is our username, that M365 admin that we've successfully fished, their password that we've stolen, and the captured tokens. We could go ahead and say sessions based off of just that ID number three in this case, and it will dump all of the tokens for us. Here it is. This is the giant cookie JSON blob that we could use to now log in to Office as that victim user. So here, let me open up like my web browser, Firefox over on the threat actor side. I'm gonna grab just a super simple cookie editor for my web browser. Yep, that's fine. We can install cookie editor, I don't care. Add to Firefox. Now I could try to go to office.com as if I were a logged in user. I could try to sign in. You can see that I don't have that access right now. I don't know the username and password because I am the threat actor and hacker, but we've just stolen their cookies, all the session details. So let me go use my edit this cookie editor. We can delete all the stuff that it thinks it has, maybe sessions that Microsoft had just started as if we were to log in, but let me click on this import button and let's paste in everything that we just received from Evil Jinx. We'll go ahead and click import, and now I will refresh the page or just go right back to office.com. Log in, can I click sign in here? Signing in, signing in. Yeah, we are logged in. Take a look, we are that M365 admin user. Thanks to Evil Jinx, we have now taken over this entire account. We can get into whatever admin section, Teams, Microsoft Word, Excel, whatever. If I jump over to Outlook here, hey, we could see the phishing email that this all started from, right? <laughs> oh, just that Dumbo little thing. But hey, don't forget, Evil Jinx is what made that possible and super duper easy because it is the reverse proxy. It can man in the middle so the user is genuinely talking to like Microsoft, but it's just being funneled in a space that we can listen in and steal the cookies and tokens out of. So we did it. We stole a Microsoft 365 account, all thanks to a little social engineering, a little phishing, and we did that all with Evil Jinx. The crucial part of that though is the fishlet. It's the configuration on how to actually steal and swipe those tokens from that website. And hey, if you want to learn a little bit more about Evil Jinx, or even if you're already using it for like red team engagements, for penetration testing, look, Kuba and the whole creators behind Evil Jinx are putting together Evil Jinx Pro. It's that community of red teamers, penetration testers, the future of phishing here. And it can do so much more cool stuff. Like maybe 
phishing with QR codes. Hey, using that course and maybe blending together some other techniques like mark of the web bypasses, other CVEs and vulnerabilities that you could do a whole lot with some social engineering and some phishing and evil jinx. I hope you go take a look. There is so much stuff you can do. I, for one thing, totally agree that for cloud environments like Microsoft 365, this social engineering attack vector is like one of the best ways in. And maybe it's not M365. Maybe it's Google. Maybe it's Google Workspace. Maybe it's Okta. Maybe it's whatever website you want. You can go beat it up with Evil Jinx and put together some fishlets. And you can use my link below for a 20% off discount of the Evil Jinx Mastery course. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a thing or two. And I hope you go take a look at BreakDev, Evil Jinx Pro, Evil Jinx Mastery, this whole world of great stuff that you could do for some fishing with Evil Jinx. Thanks again.